Anyway, everyone, I hope you're having a good week so far, and prayers for you particularly if um, you have gone back to school, or for you if your you know children and grandchildren have gone back to school. Um, it's great blessing they've been able to do that, but it's not always easy. As I say, prayers for you. And uh, just remember there's that prayer we prayed on Sunday for each of the children um, that you can also access on uh, your Facebook group for the church um, as, um, so you can pray along as well. Well, we're halfway through the week now, but um, I would like us to just have a, a quick thought this week as well. I wonder if I asked you this question, how you would respond. What's more important, your individual identity or your group identity? What's more important, your individual identity or your group identity? Well, it sounds a bit like it might be a bit of an academic question, really, doesn't it? But the reality is, it's a really important question, something we each need to think about because it affects our day-to-day -day lives. In our culture, for example, we're largely individualistic. What I say goes, what I think um, matters. You know, and there's good things to that, isn't there? We've seen the damage that can be done when people are not allowed to think and to feel. The damage that can be done there. Well, other cultures are more group identity focused. The needs of the group are far more important than your individual needs. As a, a famous proverb, for example, in Japan, the nail that sticks out will be hammered down. Everyone should work together to be the same, to have a group identity, because as much as the individual is important, it's not as important as the group is. Thing is, though, we need both, don't we? We need both group identity and individual identity. If I said, for example, because most people don't like pineapple on pizza. Pineapple is banned on pizza from here on out. Nobody's allowed to eat it. We'd think that's ridiculous. Well, I certainly would anyway. But likewise, if I said, well, you know, it's not good for the group, but if you as an individual feel it's beneficial to you to murder people, if killing that person helps you, well, then that's fine. You go ahead and do that. It doesn't matter, does it? Well, that's equally a balmy if not extremely more barbaric, of course. We know that there's certain things we give up, certain rights and ideas that we give up as individuals to allow the group to thrive better. And the group knows that we need to invite, let the individual thrive to be able to let the group do better as well. Uh, the same is true, of course, for um, all of life as it is for the church. I mean, we read more about that in the articles we're looking at this week, particularly Articles 19 to 21. There are some things that the church has authority over to um, say this is what we as a body of people, as God's people in this place, are going to do, are, are going to be and going to do. This is what we expect of Christians. If we say we belong to Jesus, this is how we expect you to act. These are things that we believe as a group. But of course, that doesn't go with absolutely everything, does it? You know. No, no, we don't all have to wear suits to church. What you wear to church within reason is, is up to you, isn't it? But actually the way we love our neighbour and treat our neighbour really matters. The things we believe about God really matters. But of course there's a limit to that, that corporate identity. There's a limit to what the church is allowed to dictate to you. And this is what the articles are saying this week is, it's important you listen it's important you engage, it's important that as far as possible we belong together, that our group identity as the body of Christ is bigger than my identity as an individual, but the limit of that is what scripture teaches. The church has no right to tell you anything the scripture doesn't say. And so if it doesn't say it, the church can't enforce that on you. Of course, the important part of that then is that you as an individual read the Bible and not just in passing, but meditate on it. Read it over and over and over. Try and understand it as best you can. Listen to other good teachers around to help you understand that better. So I wonder about you. This is the beginning of a conversation, of course, but where does your autonomy as an individual Christian start and end? 
where does our um, identity as a group, as followers of Jesus, start and end? What rights are you willing to give up to belong? And which ones are you not? Do you know the scriptures well enough to be able to challenge when the church says things that actually maybe aren't right? Or likewise, for to allow the church to challenge you when you're doing or thinking things that aren't right? Well, that's it for this week. A lot to think about. Um, and I hope um, as you do so, uh, it's a blessing to you and good for God and, uh, uh, God's church and to his glory. Have a great week. Bye. Bye.